If you call me old school when it comes to video games, you're probably announcing a major understatement. Yes, person who obviously knows very little about me, I am an old school gamer. Not in the sense that I enjoy seriously retro games. I'm not going to sit down with an Atari and just have a blast. Pong is boring, Frogger isn't much better, and I'm too young to remember the classic NES games. No, I'm an old school gamer of the time when I first fell in love with games. It's like getting your first kiss. It's magical. It stays with you forever. Games from the Nintendo GameCube will always hold a near and dear place in my heart as being the first console games I ever played, and while I may talk about that later, I will talk about another childhood favorite of mine, the Xbox 360. Enter 14-year-old Brancake. Lover of adorable memes like Nyan Cat and equal lover of explosions and action movies. This oddball taste of mine applied to many aspects of my life, including my taste in video games. That being said, here's a nostalgic look at my top 5 favorite Xbox 360 games of all time. Number 5. Tales of Vesperia. Kicking off the playlist, we start with an interesting game for sure, and, and while it's not technically an Xbox 360 exclusive, since it was also released on the PlayStation 3, this was, and still is, the only game in the Tales of series that is available for the Xbox 360. This game's coolness comes from its ability to borrow mechanics and concepts from all sorts of genres, using a combat style similar to that of the Naruto series of games, but also sort of cheerily tipping its hat to the Final Fantasy games. It's got everything a pubescent, squeaky-voiced teen could desire. Anime art style, action-packed encounters, adorably entertaining protagonist, and giant ferocious beasts that will literally eat your face off. A solid, fun, and exciting game that sucks you in and keeps you locked in your room until wee hours of the morning. Number 4, Battle Block Theater. This game didn't actually come out until much later, much long past my nostalgic reach, but it deserves a spot on this list purely because of what it is. Despite being released around the time of the Xbox 360's final days, this game was still very well received and is definitely a favorite choice to settle any disputes between you and your friends. Being awarded a 10 out of 10 on Steam and an 85 on Metacritic, and those guys don't give anyone a 100 so whatever, this game deserves the praise. Combining indie platformer puzzle solving with arcade style punch em, shoot em, destroy em up action, it's a perfect eclectic blend of style, competition, and logic packed into one game, putting the fun back in functional. Number 3. Beautiful Katamari. Okay, so if you know me, you know I love Katamari. I mean, I love it. It's adorably, obviously Japanese art style, bright visuals, and funky looking characters has left me enamored with the game since I was young. The simplicity of the game leaves me strangely satisfied. Seriously, who doesn't love rolling things up in a ball? Rolling things up in a ball is like an essential part of life. If you're a baker, you roll dough up in a ball and make delicious donut holes. If you're an Australopithecine from the Pliocene era, you're probably rolling a big rock up a hill for, you know, some reason. Caveman stuff, probably. And if you're a dung beetle, you're rolling up other people's poop, so you can put your unborn children inside of the giant poop ball for nourishment. See? Rolling things up in a ball is beautiful. And this game exemplifies that point. That's why it is a beautiful, beautiful Katamari. Roll it up, Prince. Roll it right the hell up. Number 2, Gears of War 3. Alright, this is the game I've been waiting to talk about all video. This game has every single bit of bloodlust induced carnage and fantastical monstrosities that any crazy, hormone driven teenager would go nanners over. I mean, seriously, the creatures in this game are just bad ass. Come on, people, give it everything you got! I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. On top of the bad assery that is the nasty enemies in this game, the combat is just epic. The game has one simple formula it's had since the first installment of the series, because if it ain't broke, why fix it, right? Just mentioning previous games reminds me of all of the fun I've had with this series, and particularly Gears of War 2. My best friend Keenan and I used to play Horde mode obsessively, trying to get the farthest into it as possible. We would spend hours in front of the TV, shooting down the locust horde that surrounded us from all sides. And that was the life, man. I in Gears of War in general, not much has changed, sans the progression of the storyline. And honestly, that's okay. Far too often I see sequels of a franchise that diverge so far away from the original games, they become a completely different game. In truth, 
I can't understand why anyone would want to run away from a successful game. If your game was successful enough to warrant you creating a sequel, why would you strafe so far away from it? Gears is simple, it's badass, it's addicting, and it's a piece of my childhood I'll never forget. Enough said. Number 1. Fable 2 this, ladies and gentlemen, is the pinnacle of nostalgia for me. Aside from my near 1,000 hour gaming streak on World of Warcraft, this is probably the most played game throughout my adolescent years. I, I would spend almost every evening playing Fable 2, going through the story mode, deleting the save, and then doing it all again. With so much customization, the game provides a lot of different ways to fight, but keeps it clean and simple, through the three main branches of combat for the hero. Fable 2 can be picked up by anyone, Young or old, elite gamer or total noob, it provides hours of entertainment with deliciously cartoony yet hyper-realistic art styles and a total sense of immersion into the world of Albion. Interactions with NPCs was, unlike most of Fable 2's competitors, surprisingly in-depth for a game of its time. Whereas most games feel like they include NPCs only as, you know, linear, flat, static figures, used only as plot devices half the time, Fable 2 gave us the unique ability to see each NPC as a real person, an entity in the game that, without them, would make the game feel a little more empty and hollow. This game will always hold a special place in my heart as the one console game I really fell in love with. And that's why Fable 2 earns a number one spot in my list of the top five best Xbox 360 games. So there you have it, my personal choice for top five favorite games for the Xbox 360. Do you guys agree with the list? Do you remember all of these games? Do you remember the nostalgia behind them? Do you think maybe this list isn't quite complete? Or maybe there's some games you wish you would have seen on this list? Leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought. Or you guys can comment and tell me what your absolute favorite Xbox 360 game was, period. Any game at all, it could have been a game that was released across all of the platforms of that generation. Uh, it could be just a game that you just really appreciate and a game that reminds you of something from your childhood. Or maybe it's a game you just stumbled upon recently a few months back and just fell in love with it. In either case, let me know what you guys think, tell me about your favorite games, and thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and if you like what I do, definitely don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much guys, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!